Hello and welcome to this quick video for you INAV pilots that are struggling with your plane or wing not flying very well in manual mode. Now I made a video a little while ago talking about this from the other way where it flies okay in manual mode but it doesn't fly very well in angle, horizon or anything else. So if that's your problem do go and check that out. However this one is more for you pilots who may have set up INAV, got to the end and are flying in angle or horizon and it flies great but as soon as you put it into manual mode it either pitches down or up and rolls or a combination of all those things and life gets very interesting very quickly. Now there is a very basic reason for this and I'm making this video because I know this is something that is catching a couple of people out including one of my Patreons recently so I thought I'd make this separate video. However if you are new to iNav I would heartily recommend go and check out my latest iNav for Beginners series. I'm going to put a link down below to go and check that out. I go through each and every single step that I go through to set up iNav here. It's a process that pretty much everyone uses but it's been refined over the last 10 years flying iNav and it's pretty bulletproof at this point. There's no point getting too sophisticated or carried away. If you follow the steps that I outlined in that series, you'll get to the end and it will work fine. The thing that you're missing if you haven't watched that series is that there is this thing called continuously trim servos here at the bottom of the configuration tab. But not get ahead of myself here. Let's talk about why this happens, why in manual mode the plane is uncontrollable and wants to crash, while in angle and horizon mode it's absolutely fine. When you set the model up you will calibrate the accelerometer and tell the accelerometer what level feels like so the flight controller knows what level should be. When you're flying in any of the stabilized modes, angle, horizon, things like waypoint missions, whatever else is you're flying, it's using that level as the basis for how to set the attitude of the aircraft that it's in. So even if your control surfaces aren't set properly and not trimmed, doesn't really matter because I now have set them so that it sets, maintains that level attitude that you've set up on the bench. However, it does mean that the servos are not trimmed that means that when you go into manual mode, that's when you get the problem. And that's because in manual mode, it's a bit of a weird mode, because manual mode turns off all of the INAV help, and all it does is add the expo that you've added to the controls and do the mixing that you've asked the mixer to do. So things like a flying wing will continue to mix the ailerons and elevator or a V-tail, the rudder and the elevator. Everything else is turned off. So all that help that you get in those horizon and angle modes disappears. And that means that the attitude of the aircraft is held in place by the position of the control surfaces. Now in a normal aircraft without INAV, the way that a pilot would get it into the air would be you would launch it and then you would trim the aircraft using the trims around the controls. And that would probably be maybe a little bit of up elevator, maybe a little bit of aileron to combat the torque of the motor and you dial it in. And then when you've done that, you'd save those trims down to the sub trims and you're all set. However, a lot of the issues that I see is when people start using the trims on the radio. In INAV, you never ever use those trims. It's a big no-no. That's because the middle channel positions of 1500 tell INAV that you don't want it to change direction at all. So if you start trimming the radio in manual mode, when you flip back into angle or horizon, you'll find that it's always rolling or climbing or sinking because the middle channel positions, because you've trimmed them, are no longer 1500. So how do you fix this? Well, let's go back to that continuously trim servos. Now, this is something that I'm quite proud of because I actually asked for this from the INAV development team. Being able to continuously trim the servos is something that Ardu Plane has had for a very long time. It's a feature that I loved and I asked the developers to put it in INAV and a big thank you to the INAV development team because they did. So by turning on that little checkbox in the configuration tab, what happens is as you fly in angle or horizon mode, what it's actually doing is it's maintaining its level position because you've told it what level feels like, as we've just discussed, but this time it's actually watching what the midpoints of all the servos need to be in order to maintain that level flight. And what it then does is then save those new midpoint positions down onto the flight controller. 
So if the ailerons have to have a little bit of a movement, may it needs to be 1420, not 1500 to combat the torque of the motor. Maybe the elevator needs to be a couple of millimeters up to combat the dropping of the nose. Then that is all going to be done for you. You don't need to set up a mode. You don't need to do anything special. The only thing that I would recommend that you do is in your maiden flight, launch it initially I would recommend it angle or horizon. I use horizon. Fly it about, just make sure it's working okay. While you're flying it around, I know if it's figuring out what all those middle channel positions need to be and saving that information down. So when you flick into manual mode, you will find that all those control surfaces are trimmed beautifully. And that's it. Now, you can turn off continuously trimmed servos once you've had that initial maiden flight. However, I don't. I tend to leave it turned on. And that way, if I don't get the battery in exactly the same spot, the central gravity has moved fractionally, or maybe I'm running the prop at a bit, bit more aggressively so there's more torque roll that needs to be countered from the ailerons, the flight controller just takes care of that as I launch in angle or horizon before I flick and fly in manual. Two last big pro tips, never ever use the trims on the radio to combat any roll or pitch movement in manual mode. Always leave them alone, potentially even disable them on the radio. You never ever do any channel reversing or trimming on the radio with iNav, it's all done within the flight controller. And last thing is again, going back to what I said at the beginning, if you are not sure about how to set up iNav, check out my iNav for beginner series. I cover every single step, including turning on this cute little feature, continuously trim servos, which will basically mean that if you fly in a stabilized mode first, when you flick into manual mode, you'll work fine. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.